Welcome to chapter 5, uh, Trig Functions and Graphs. So uh, this carries on from where we were in chapter 4. Uh, so we're going to start off here by taking a look at our... Assuming that you already uh, can refer to this unit circle and you know where all this stuff comes from, we're going to take a look at a couple of patterns in here. Uh, I'm going to start off by saying that uh, the decimal equivalents here, uh, so you know what a half is, uh, is one, 0 0.5 is a decimal, uh, root 2 over 2, if you do that on your calculator, uh, is about 0 0.707, uh, root 3 over 2, uh, 0 0.866 uh, approximately, and the decimals, they're irrational, so the decimals keep on going. What The reason why it's useful is that we're going to do is, uh, we're going to graph this. So using that table above, uh, if we take a look at the different values of theta, so that's kind of like our, our x value pl plugging into the function, what comes out, our y value will be a sine of theta. And then we're going to graph it onto this graph uh, below. So one thing you'll notice is that my x-axis, uh, instead of just using 0 and 1, 2, 3, I put it in terms of pi. Okay, so uh, 0, pi over 6, pi over 4, pi over 3, pi over 2, those are in my first quadrant, so I'm going to do my, our uh, these ones in our first quadrant afterwards, and then um, after that I'll just go pi, 3 pi over 2, and 2 pi. So um, these are not even steps, and, and we'll see the, the pattern kind of happen. So uh, the first one is uh, sine of theta, so that's the y value is going to be equal to 0, and the cos value is 1 over here. Uh, this is 1 half, and this is root 3 over 2, Okay, you know what I'll do is um, I'll ask uh, ask you to complete the chart, pause the video, uh, complete this little chart, and then uh, I'll come back in just a second and we'll um, finish finish these things, okay? Okay, I'm back. I've, I've finished that chart. Uh, maybe I could even uh, just remind ourselves just for a couple of these ones. Again, this... Uh, in, I'll put it in red. This root 3 over 2 is 0 0.866 and this root 2 over 2 is 0 0.707. Okay, so now let's go and uh, figure out where we're going to put our our dots on our chart. Okay, so uh, we'll let's do a sine. We'll do sine in blue and then we'll do cos maybe in green or a different color. So we'll start off with sine and we got sine when the x value is 0, so that's theta, when this is this is like our x value here, and this would be like our y value, we have a 0, 0. So sine starts at the origin, and then at pi over 6. Now it's a little bit of an effort to figure out where is the pi over 6. So if this is pi here, uh, we should have 6 even marks from here to here, or if this is pi over 2, we should have 3 even marks. So if I think about trying to make even marks, okay, so this is about the pi over 6 is, okay? So pi over 6 here, when x is pi over 6, sine of theta, here I'll put this is theta, and this is in blue the sine of theta, so that's our, our y-axis, is equal to a half, so I'll put a dot right about there, so it's supposed to be a half. When theta is equal to pi over 4, so pi over 4 is going to be halfway in between here, so it'll be about at that spot right there, uh, then we get root 2 over 2, which is about 0 0.707, so about 3 quarters way up or so, or about like that. Oop, I should put it there actually, because this is my pi over 4 spot. I'll even put that, that's pi over 4. And this one here was pi over 6. Uh, you know, I won't even put that one in there. My next one, uh, pi over 3, so that'll be at this spot over here, is uh, at root 3 over 2, which is my 0.866 value. So my 0.866, it's uh, even higher. So 0.866 is about maybe over there. And then at pi over 2, so that's here, it's equal to 1. So for the first quadrant, you see this nice curve that's happening. Okay, um, that curve is going to be typical for our function continuously. We're going to have nice a nice smooth curve. When you ask to sketch, it's not so important that you get your curve perfect, okay? But something that you can notice is that it is pretty steep when it hits the origin here, or when it hits this spot, and it's kind of 
gradually hits the the one and touches and starts coming back again. Uh, now I'm just going to do my jumps by pi over two. So at pi over two already, I said that when x is when the, on the x-axis we have pi over two, sine of theta is one. Now when we go to pi, it's zero. At uh, three pi over two, it's negative one. And at two pi, it's zero again. So. I'm just going to sketch in our nice curves so we look like that. Okay, something like this. Um, now I stopped my chart here at 2 pi, but what if we went to the next one? If we did 5 pi over 2, uh, what would be the sine value for 5 pi over 2? Well, let's go up to our chart here. 5 pi over 2 would be the same thing as saying, okay, this is one full rotation. That's 4 pi over 2. And then 5 pi over 2 would be to this spot, wouldn't it? So that would be 5 pi over 2. It'd be coterminal with pi over 2. So coterminal with pi over 2, we're just going to start over again. Okay, so we're going to get a 1 here and we get a 0 here. So the pattern keeps on going. So I could even just write this so it keeps on going. We should put arrows at the end to show that it's going to keep on going. And so uh, if we are jumping by pi over twos, you see the pattern. We go up, down, or you know, up, back, down, back, up, back. So we could even extend this the other direction and see this pattern continued. Okay, so this is the w way the sine of theta looks. Let's do cos. Okay, so cos is going to be in green. The difference here is cos is going to start at one. Sine starts at the origin, goes up, cos starts at 1, and it's going to be coming down. So our next value at pi over 6, so this is where our pi over 6 is, is 0.866. So that is this highest one right there. Try to make a dot. At pi over 4, it's root 2 over 2. So this is where it ties, right? This is where they intersect. Uh, at pi over 3, cos is a half. So a half would be about there. And now we're going to be getting the easy ones. Now we have 0 at pi over 2. And then we have negative 1. And then you can sort of see the patterns taking place again. We just do that. Okay, so now trying to make this work nice. Okay, and try to make your curves a little bit gentle. And it's not an art class. Like, you're not going to lose marks if your curves aren't perfect. Obviously, my curves aren't perfect. I would avoid going like this, right, up and down. You should kind of try to make some smooth curves. Uh, but as long as you've got, you're hitting the major points, as long as you've got those dots showing you're good. Uh, what about if we're going to the left? Is we're going to follow that same pattern. So we go down, right, back to zero. And then we go down. When we hit down, we go back up. Okay. Um... There you go. If we go take a look at uh, desmos.com, here's a nice little curve. Uh, you'll notice that in this, I'll just zoom in a little bit here. Uh, the default for Desmos is to graph, uh, to scale things using regular numbers. Uh, if you're going to use Desmos, and I really encourage you to play around a little bit, you can change the, um, the step here for the x-axis. So for the x-axis, say I'm going to say, oh, now I'm typing on the keyboard PI. And when I do, it changes to this pi symbol, which is kind of cool. And look at that. Right away, they give me things in terms of in pi instead of straight numbers. So it works out quite well, doesn't it? And if I zoom in more, um, you can see, yeah, it looks great. we got this 0. This is where pi over 2 is going to be. If I want to show that, I could actually go here, pi over 2, and enforce enforce the fact that I want pi over 2 labeled. So I say 0, pi over 2, pi over 6, and we can see that nice pattern happening. Okay, so that one is uh, sine, and I'll do cos. Uh, there's a thing. So what's the difference between uh, the sine and the cos? Really, uh, it's just moved to the left, right? Translated to the left by pi over 2. It's shifted over pi over 2. So if we took one and we shifted it over, uh, we would get the other one. There is, uh, on the next page, 
uh, a cool, I don't know, I always say GIF, but I'm told you're supposed to say GIF, but there's a cool one of those. Um, I find that it works better in Internet Explorer, one of the few things that Internet Explorer is better at, because I can hit Escape to pause it. So right now, this is an animated GIF, it's paused right now, but you'll look, uh, as this goes around the unit circle, and this is uh, another smaller version of what's happening on the green arrow, right now we're at the the, the standard initial arm, we're at uh, the positive x-axis, and as this starts moving here, you'll see that this red line will go up. So the sign here is whatever the y value is on the unit circle. So let's just start moving it here, and you can see, well, isn't that cool, the way that it just matches what the y value is. So it's a very um, much more sophisticated way of looking at, at y is sign equal to the y on the unit circle and it just matches that perfectly. It's a little bit harder to to map on the x on this unit circle with cos so if you start thinking oh how much is this x like right now this x value when the, when we're at this this place on the unit circle the x value looks like oh around make negative uh, 0.3 or something and so here is zero when you're mapping x uh, on cos and so it's a little bit negative so the whole thing because cos is the x-axis and when you graph it these values become in the y-axis you kind of have to do this rotation of 90 degrees so it's a little bit harder to explain and if you're not getting the cos thing don't worry about it but it certainly is a neat thing to, to look at to see the way it's moving and up here you can see they're showing the the, the amount of angle in the first revolution they're filling that up with yellow showing the amount of rotation so that's kind of a cool one uh, I'll just close that and we'll go back uh, a couple of quick definitions to get through. Uh, these are what we call periodic functions. Uh, periodic meaning that they repeat itself. Okay, so uh, you know a highlighter might be good. These uh, repeat itself. That's what periodic functions are. So in our in our calendar. Um, the month is a periodic function. It's actually based on the moon. So we get a, a full moon approximately every 28, 29 days. And so we've made months to correlate to that periodic function. The year is a periodic function. It happens over regular intervals. In this case, it's a year. And that's because it's a lap of the Earth around the sun. Uh, sinusoidal functions. Now that's a big word, sinusoidal. And the thing about sinusoidal is that it doesn't refer to just sine. Both sine and cos are sinusoidal. And what we mean is that they go, they have this back and forth uh, motion. So if I go back over here, uh, the fact that they're going up and down and back and forth is sinusoidal. We can use uh, sine and cos to uh, model different things in real life. So I just mentioned uh, things to do with the earth. Uh, so one correlation to that is if you would to do a map of the hours of daylight that we have in a day. We're going to have uh, the increase and the peak in, um, in June and they're at a minimum at December 22nd or 21st depending on the year and then those are the solstice right the the spring and the, the, the winter solstice and then during the equinoxes is when we have equal time during the 12 hours a day, 12 hours a night, and so we get this kind of cool sinusoidal uh, function. Another one might be uh, for tides. If the tide's going to go and we'll have a high tide and then a low tide, and, and for both of these the x-axis is time. So we're going to be doing that in this, in this uh, unit is using our sinusoidal functions, which is both sine and cos, uh, to model real world things. So what is the period? The period is the length of the interval uh, over which a function travels one full rotation. So if I was to map this uh, on here, so I mean I need an arrow here. Okay, so if we were to start here, one full period would be where it starts repeating again. So that would be one full period. What's the length of that? I'm not sure if you can read it. It's 2 pi. So the period uh, for these functions are 2 pi. So uh, we're going to see when that changes. But in our basic version of sine and cos, the period equals 2 pi. All right, the amplitude. Now, oh, and by the way, you don't have to start from here. You can start from anywhere, just like in physics. You can start from anywhere, and it's how long you have to go until it repeats itself, until it corresponds to the same point in the wave. So if I was to start here, right, I would end there. 
and again this same distance would be 2 pi if I'm starting at pi over 2 I get to you know uh, 3 pi over was a 5 pi over 2. Uh, amplitude is the vertical distance from the horizontal central axis. There's a bit of a mouthful. Horizontal central axis. Okay, so in this case, this is the horizontal central axis. Horizontal central axis. Uh, sometimes we also call it the median. Okay, it's the it's the middle of it. Okay, so in our basic y is equal to sine theta or y is equal to cos theta, I'm drawing on cos theta right now. Uh, uh, then the median and the horizontal central axis is the x-axis, but it's not always the case. So we're going to encounter other situations where it's not. So the amplitude now, the amplitude is the vertical distance from, from here to the maximum. So there is the amplitude. Okay, so one thing is be careful about amplitude. Amplitude is not the distance the distance between the maximum and the minimum. It's from in in physics we call it the equilibrium to the maximum or the equilibrium to the minimum. So this this is one way to measure the amplitude. You could also measure amplitude this way, right? That would also be the amplitude. Just don't take it from the very maximum to the very minimum, because that would give you twice the amplitude, right? Uh, note, y equals sine of x and y equals cos of x are identical, except for a translation of pi over 2, sure. And you're going to notice that sometimes we're going to use uh, theta, and sometimes we're going to use x, and we kind of use them interchangeably. But if in one question, if they say, if they use x, continue to use x all the way through. Or if there's another question, if uh, the question's asked in terms of uh, theta, then answer using theta. So don't switch uh, from one to another. Okay, let's take a look at the properties here uh, of each of these. Uh, what is the domain of y is equal to the sine of x? So in other words, what are all the possible x values that I can, I'm allowed to plug in? And so as you recall the, uh, in the past when we did rational functions and such, uh, we were always mindful of the fact that we did not want to divide by zero and we did not want to do the square root of a negative value. Uh, there's this y uh, equals sine goes on forever. The domain is, uh, is everywhere. I wonder if I highlight... Oh, I was kind of hoping it would just show up. Okay, I think I can. I've set this up because instead of writing, I want it to show up in my typing. So if I go... Uh, oh, how do I do this here? Stop inking, and then if I go... There we go. Okay, so the domain is all real values. And I can either write it this way and say from negative infinity to positive infinity, or I can write it that x is a part of the set of all real numbers. So this is to say that you can put anything in there. How about the range for y is equal to sine? So again, this is the y equals sine over here. It never goes above positive 1 and never goes below negative 1. So the way to write the range then would be here. And again, I put it in both styles of notation. Negative 1 is less than or equal to y, which is less than or equal to 1. Uh, this is probably the way that we're um, you're most familiar. You're going to see this more and more in this course about this way to write it. So it's the square bracket because it's uh, negative 1 is less than or equal to. If it didn't have the equal sign, then it would be the curved bracket. Uh, so there, that is the range between negative 1 and positive 1. What are the zeros? So another way of saying what are the zeros is um, where, what are the x-intercepts? Where does this line cross the x-axis? So it crosses at 0, it crosses at pi, it crosses at 2 pi, and I think you can see that it's going to go on infinitely in both in the positive direction and the negative direction. So similar to writing the general solution in the previous unit, uh, we can write this that uh, x, the zeros are wherever x is equal to some integer multiple of pi. So we write k pi, where k is a member of the integers, and we use the letter i most of the time for integers, but you really could use the letter z if you wanted to as well. So all the positive and negative uh, whole numbers. Uh, what is the y-intercept? Where does it cross the y-axis? Well, clearly it crosses at 0, so our answer here is y is equal to 0. What's the maximum value? The maximum value is when y is equal to 1, the minimum y is equal to negative 1. What is the amplitude? 
the amplitude we talked about a little while ago is going to be equal to 1, won't it? And what is the period? Oh, I told you already. I gave this one away. The answer is 2 pi. Okay, so I want you to go and see if you can, on your own, do the right-hand side. Can you complete the y is equal to cos x? So in just a second or so, I will... All right, so hopefully you've got that done. If not, you still have a chance to pause, and uh, I will see if I can quickly do a reveal. Boom, isn't that cool? All right, the domain is the same. The range is the same. Now, this was the toughest part with the zeros. The zeros is where this line crosses the x-axis. So it crosses at uh, pi over 2. Here, let me start writing again. Uh, the zeros, it crosses at, let me list here, pi over 2. And the next one where it crosses is at 3 pi over 2. And the next one where it crosses would be 5 pi over 2. So you see, we start at pi over 2, and the jump each time is a jump of pi. So that's how this is set up. We're starting at pi over 2, and we're jumping by pi each time. So that's how that is set up, pi over 2 plus k pi. Uh, the y-intercept now is 1. Uh, the maximum, minimum, and amplitude and period are all the same. Okay. Uh, just as a reminder, the quick sketch of how these look, because you're going to have to uh, remember how they look. Sine starts from 0 and goes up. Okay. Cos starts at 1 and comes down. Okay. Cos has this neat symmetrical look, you know, about the axis here, right? Uh, ooh, I don't know why I lost my sign. Okay. So, um, if you can make up some memory trick, some mnemonic or whatever, just do this a bunch of times. So sine starts from zero and goes up. Cos starts at one and comes down. Okay, so however you can remember that is an important one to get. Um, just like any other function that we did, we can do transformations uh, for sine and for cos. So let me go back to my my Desmos over here. So if I, um, I'll just work with sine here. And I'm going to say... Uh, y is equal to uh, a multiplied by uh, f of b times x. Uh, b times x. B, there we go. And I'll make sliders for them. Okay, so <clears throat> what this is saying is what happens if I have, for example, um, here I'll write one out by hand, y is equal to 2 times the sine of x. Uh, what happened was that this changed the amplitude. Everything else is the same, but it changed the amplitude. So how can I model this on my, my green one? Is that I can make my a value equal to 2. So if I do this and make my a value equal to 2, that's the same one. So just to show how the, these lines here, the lines 2, 3, and 4, is the same thing as a 5, is that this has an a value of 2. So you can see, as I change this a value, it changes the amplitude. Uh, and you'll notice too, if I go negative, it reflects, doesn't it? So the absolute value of A tells me the amplitude. Okay. Uh, all right. Now, what happens if we change? I'll get rid of that one. What happens if we change the B value? I'll put this back down to one. The B value of X. Now you remember what before. Whatever um, A is, it multiplies all the Y values by A. Whatever B is, it uh, multiplies the x values by 1 over b, right? or divides by b. So it does the opposite kind of effect. So it has a horizontal of effect, and as I increase b, the, this will compress, becomes a compression. So when b is greater than 1, it compresses, and this is what it looks like when it compresses. You can see it's like a, a slinky or you know a bed spring or something. I'm compressing it. So as I make b larger and larger, it compresses it. Let's just put b at 2 for a second, okay? So... Um, what it happens when it compresses is it changes the period. Okay, so for my original function, the period is two pi. So you can see changes all the way up to two pi. That's one period. Now in my new one with a b value of two, what's the period? Where does it start to repeat each other? Well, it starts at zero and then it repeats at pi. Okay, so the period is the original two pi divided by our b. In fact, let's go down here and take a look at this. It says 
the transformation. So we have two transformations. And first of all, this A value here, this is our amplitude. Okay, That is our amplitude. And just a reminder, back in our day when we were talking about uh, transformations, um, the, the Y values are multiplied by A. Right, and what did we call that? We called that a, a vertical stretch. Well, specifically, we called it a stretch when uh, a was greater than one, right? And a compression comp for compression when a was less than one. All right, uh, our b values. What happens with our b values? Our our x. So this has an effect over here. Our x values are multiplied by 1 over b, which is another way of saying divided by b. Right? These are the two ways of saying the same thing. So we had a horizontal uh, stretch when b was less than 1, and we had a compression when B was greater than one. Uh, so this is our important piece here that I just talked about, that the period, the new period is two pi divided by B. And this is an important note to remember. The B value is not the period. The B value is used to find the period, okay? But it is not the period. So by the way, the B value is not the period. Period is two pi divided by B. I'm gonna say that a lot, period is equal to 2 pi over b, just so that it kind of gets ingrained in there. Okay, so let's try these out. So let's see if we can just sketch these out. In this one, what is a and what is b? Uh, you'll remember that a is that value out front. Okay, the a is the value out front. So in this case, oh, did I lose something here? Oh, is sine is equal to 4. Oh, my, something weird is happening on my screen. I'm going to just pause and see if I can fix it. Oh, we're back. Okay. Uh, my A value is a half. And I don't have a B value. So in other words, B value is 1. So uh, if it's sine, I'm starting from here. Okay. And what I would do is mark off uh, equal, uh, maybe for the whole period is going to end up over there. Uh, and I would mark off equal spots here. Divide that into four equal spaces. We have one, two, three, four, five dots. And this is our starting point. And since it's sine, we're going to be going up, uh, back, down, back, and then up again. So uh, my, and I can get my nice curve in here. Oh, it looks like my spacing isn't very equal, is it? Anyways. How come it's not very good, well spaced? Oh, I, I'm going to just erase this. I see that first part here. Here, let me try this one more time. Okay. So I should go up, back, and down, and back. There we go. Better, better. Okay, so up. Okay, so there's my basic curve. Uh, so if B is equal to 1, then my period is equal to, maybe you remember it, say it out loud, 2 pi over b, yay. So what is 2 pi over 1? 2 pi. So my entire period, so this is one period, this is where my 2 pi goes. So this is 2 pi. Okay, now I'm going to divide 2 pi into four equal places. So each one of these, 1, 2, 3, 4, if I divide 2 pi by 4, I get pi over 2. In other words, my marks here are pi over 2 apart. So this one is pi over 2. This one is pi, because it's 2 pi over 2, right? This one is 3 pi over 2. And that one is 4 pi over 2, or 2 pi. So I, first, my first part is figuring out my period. Whatever my period is, I'm going to divide by 4 to figure out what my four equal parts are. Okay. Now the next one, what does A tell you? My a tells me that the amplitude is a half. So on my regular y equals sine of x, this would have been 1. But now because the amplitude is a half, this will be half. And down here is a negative a half. And that's how that one looks. Hey, let's go to Desmos and check it out, see if we can make something similar. So we said in this one that A is equal to a half. 
Come on. There you go. A half and B is equal to 1. And I'll erase my original one. So there we go. So um, if I zoom in there, we can see this it does hit a half. And we did it quite well, didn't we? We hit all those major points. Okay. Let's try our uh, this, the, the, a cos one here. So for cos, we're going to start at... Uh, one or start at our maximum. Pardon me. We're going to start at our maximum, and uh, we're going to end somewhere else over here, and that's where our maximum will be again. So that will be a whole period, and so from here to here is our entire period of time, and then we're going to divide this into four equal spots. Okay, so that's kind of our starting. We know we're going to do cos, so we'll kind of run like that. Our a value is going to be equal to three, and our b value is equal to one. So uh, cos is going to go here to here, and then if this is if this is our maximum, our minimum should be completely the same distance apart. Bam, bam, over here, here, and there again. So we can just sketch the curve in first. Okay. Now let's figure out our values. Okay. So our maximum should be positive three. Our minimum should be minus three. Right, because this is the amplitude of 3. Um, our period, b is still 1, so our period is still 2 pi. And uh, we can put in our other pieces here, just like we did before, 3 pi over 2. And this one will be pi over 2. Okay, so those are the first two examples. Now let's do an example where uh, what we're changing is the b value. So here a is equal to 1 and b is equal to 4. Okay, so we're going to do sine, so we're going to be starting here. Uh, one period away will be over here, and we're going to be going, if that's our maximum and that's our minimum, I don't know what those values are yet, you know, we'll just figure that out first. First we'll just do this uh, kind of skeletal version. Okay, so we'll put in the sketch first, and then we'll label it. All right, so there we go. So our maximum is uh, 1 because our a value is 1 and our minimum is negative 1. What changes here is our b. So the period is 2 pi over b. So that's equal to 2 pi over 4, which is pi over 2. So this is where pi over 2 is. Now I have to say, well, what are my four little even marks going to be? So I say, well, each of those marks are going to be pi over 2 over, I have to divide that by 4. Oh, that looks so hard. Pi over 2 divided by 4, what is that going to be? Well, remember, dividing is the same thing as multiplying by the reciprocal. What's the reciprocal of 4? 1 over 4. So pi over 8. So each of these marks is going to be pi over 8. So here this is pi over 8. This will be 2 pi over 8, or that's the same thing as pi over 4. This will be 3 pi over 8. And this will be 4 pi over 8, which is the same thing as pi over 2. Oh, and you know what? Something I haven't done very well here is that we should uh, have arrows. Oops, I'm losing a half mark, kids. Uh, we should put little arrows in all of these just to show that they're going to keep on going forever. The The minimum requirement is to show at least one period in these. So uh, that's what we're doing. We're showing at least one period. So you don't have to go off forever and necessarily fill the entire graph. Okay, let's do our last one here. Y is equal to uh, cos x over 2. So here uh, my a value is going to be equal to 1. My b value is hmm x over 2. That's the same thing as one half times x, isn't it? So my b value is one half. So we're doing cos, so we're going to be starting up here at the end of the periods over there, so that's uh, this mark on the x-axis. I'm going to try to divide it into four equal parts. Okay, uh, this will be one, because I know the amplitude is one. This will be a negative one over there. Now my period, I'll do my work down here, period is equal to 2 pi over b, so that's equal to 2 pi divided by a half. Again, dividing is the same thing as multiplying by the reciprocal of 1 half is 2, so my period is 4 pi. So I'll put 4 pi over here. Oh, that's really easy to divide into four equal sections. It's just pi, pi, 2 pi, 
3 pi. All right, and now here we go. We can say cos starts here, goes there, down there, here and back up again. So we're going to get a nice curve. Not a bad curve, if I do say so myself. Yeah, I'll even put it starts coming down over there. Um, let's go whip over to um, uh, Desmos and see uh, if, what happens if we put an A of 1 and a B of 2. So if I go over here, first of all, I should change this to cos if I want to model cos. Uh, there we go, and I think my A was 1, and my B was 4. So what happens when I say B is equal to 4? So uh, there is my value. So you can see we just drew the first, uh, oh no, sorry, I got that wrong. B is a half in our example, wasn't it? B is a half, 0 0.5. There we go, B is equal to half. Okay, so I'll have to, so um, what... The, the Desmos is nice because it shows it actually, you know, compressing and stretching horizontally. And what we do is really just change the scale. So even though it doesn't look like the graph compressed, the reason why it did compress is because we changed the scale. Because this, this is just from 0 to pi over 2. So uh, this one here did this entire period in the space where this one from 0 to pi over 2 just did a quarter of the period. Okay, so um, if we were to draw them both on the same graph, then you would get the same sense of how it was compressing. I'm going to take a pause here before I go on to my super duper one last example and then have you do some homework. So I'm just going to do this so you can go get a drink of water and, and relax and that kind of stuff.